Shiro suddenly felt a chill going through his body, like if someone was watching him. What the? What was that feeling in my body just now? It felt like something or someone is watching me, just who or what is it? Shiro turned around to see if there was something or someone was tailing him. To his relief, there was no one behind him. Well, there's nothing behind me, am I getting crazy? Or is it my imagination? Shiro then dismissed his thoughts and continued walking. Little did Shiro know that he was wrong, because in the distance of the hallway, there was someone following him. And that someone is Kiara Sesioin, who is also known as Beast 3 slash R. So that is Amiya Shiro, huh? The younger counterpart to the counter guardian I have corrupted many years ago. A few hours ago. Kiara Sesioin was walking in one of Chaldea's hallways, minding her own business. As she was walking, she overheard something that interested her. Hey EMIYA? Ritsuka asked EMIYA. HM? What is it master? EMIYA replied. Well, there's one question that's been on my mind for quite a while now. You see, how is it that you and Shiro are the same person, but you look different from him? EMIYA gave Ritsuka's question a long thought and said, well, it's because my younger self didn't make the same mistake me and my altered counterpart did. Really? And what mistake was that? Overusing projection. Is that the reason why you and your altered counterpart have tanned skin, white hair, and gray eyes while Shiro has red hair, untanned skin, and golden brown eyes? Yeah. I see. As Kiara overheard the conversation between Ritsuka and EMIYA, she was immediately interested in Amiya Shiro, the younger version of EMIYA Alter, who she had corrupted a long time ago. Amiya Shiro, so he's the younger version of the counter guardian I corrupted a long time ago, he sounds interesting to play with. Wonder what I shall do to him, should I break him and make him experience pleasure? Or should I brainwash him? Oh the many possibilities I want to do to him. And just like that, Kiara had one new goal in mind. Meeting Amiya Shiro. Back to the present. Kiara continued following Shiro in the distance, her mind set on meeting him and enacting her plans on what to do with him. As she continued to follow him, she had to hide in a corner again as Shiro turned around again to see if there was someone following him. TCH damn, he's always on check with something. Soon, Shiro left. As so, Kiara peeked out of the corner to see if he was gone, which he was. Kiara let out a sigh. Soon Amiya Shiro. Soon you will meet me, and you cannot escape from me and my embrace. Kiara was in the corner, monitoring her target as he was sitting alone in the cafeteria, eating his food. Great. He's alone in the cafeteria. Perfect to make a move on him. Kiara then proceeded to move out of her hiding spot and went to where Shiro was. However, before she could even to do so, Arturia and her counterparts just arrived and then went into the cafeteria. Shiro. Arturia and her counterparts yelled, grabbing his attention. HM? Oh, hey Arturia. What are all of you doing here? Isn't it obvious? We're here to have lunch with you, Arturia Alter said. Exactly. We don't want you to have lunch all by yourself you know. Arturia Lily said. That's right. After all, you are our queen, Lancer Arturia said. And what kind of king we would be if we let our queen eat alone? Lancer Arturia Alter said. Exactly. We don't want to leave you alone, ruler Arturia said. And plus, it's already lunch time right now, Archer Arturia said. Yes. And we're quite hungry now Shiro, writer Arturia Alter said. She's right. We want some of your cooking again, Santa Arturia Alter said. Yeah. I want some of your fried rice again. Mysterious Heroin X said. And your sweets too. Mysterious Heroin X Alter said. Yeah. 
So, I hope that you don't mind all of us eating here with you, mysterious heroine XX said with a smile. Sure. I don't mind, Shiro replied. Great. Arturia and her counterparts said in happiness as they sat down next to Shiro. As they did, they then ate with Shiro while having conversations with him along with themselves as well. Meanwhile, Kiera was watching the scene in temptation of crashing the scene but was waiting for Shiro to be alone to have a better chance of corrupting him. However, as time passed, Shiro was still with eating and chatting with Arturia and her counterparts and it was annoying her. Come on already. Move along you girls. Kiera thought angrily. Eventually, Arturia and her counterparts were done with their meals. Soon, they then left Shiro. Good now I can dash she thought, but was interrupted with what happened next. Because in an instant, a bunch of other servants came into the cafeteria, prompting Shiro to get back to the kitchen. Kiera groaned at what just happened. Guess she'll have to wait another day, little did she know that it was not going to be easy, like yesterday, Shiro was walking down the hallway, minding his own business. However, unlike yesterday, he didn't feel that anything or anyone following him. Well, looks like nothing is following me today. As Shiro continued walking, he came across a poster flyer that was on the wall. The poster said this. Tired of constant stress in your body? Need a way to release all of it? Well then, come to Kiera's relaxing yoga classes, where she will help you get rid of the stress in your body. Location, Chaldea's Recreational Room Number 2. Time, 12 to 1 p.m. The poster itself showed Kiera in a sports bra, workout tights, and was doing some yoga poses. Yoga, huh? Well, this poster doesn't look too suspicious, and I could use some yoga. My body feels sore recently. It was just then that three certain servants suddenly surprised him from behind, interrupting him from his thoughts. Amiya Kuan, three voices said in unison. Shiro nearly jumped from hearing the voices and turned around to see who the voices were. They were Ishtar, her writer counterpart, and Iresh Kigal. What? I Ishtar? Iresh Kigal? Yup. It's me, Amiya Kuan. And I need your help right now. Ishtar, her writer counterpart, and Iresh Kigal, said in unison. Shiro then quickly calmed down from his earlier outburst and asked the three goddesses a question. What is the problem? Well, we need your help fixing a video game console. Iresh Kigal muttered in embarrassment. What happened? Well, me, my writer counterpart, and Iresh Kigal were playing a game of some sort, and then suddenly, the game stopped for a moment, Ishtar said. Is that so? Yeah. Anyways, can you help us? Writer Ishtar asked. Shiro gave the request a thought and said, sure. Ishtar, her writer counterpart, and Iresh Kigal smiled upon hearing Shiro's answer. Great. Now let's go and fix that game so we can continue. Ishtar said. She then grabbed Shiro's arm and started dragging him to her room. Wah. Ishtar. Slow down. Shiro yelled as he was dragged by Ishtar with Ryder Ishtar and Iresh Kigal following them. Meanwhile, in one of Chaldea's recreational rooms, Kiera sighed as the person she was hoping for didn't come. This time, this time for sure I will surely capture him. Kiera thought as she was in a corner looking Shiro, who was working on fixing a broken appliance. However, before she could come up to him, Parvati suddenly showed up. Damn it. Not again. Senpai? Parvati said, making Shiro stop for a moment. HM? Oh, hey Parvati. What are you doing here? Shiro asked. Well, Da Vinci told me to give you this box, Parvati said. Shiro then grabbed the box. Ah. The parts one needed to fix this has arrived. Thank you Parvati. No problem senpai. See you later then. 
Bye. Bye. Parvati then left, leaving Shiro alone with the broken contraption. Alright, this is my chance. Kiera thought. However, before she could even do so, Kama suddenly came by. What? Shiro, Kama said. HM? Oh, hey Kama. What are you doing here? Shiro replied. Can I have some sweets now? Shiro let out a small sigh. When I done fixing with this, I'll go into the kitchen to make some sweets later. For now, be patient, okay? Okay. Kama said. Shiro smiled and gave Kama a head pat. Great. Just wait now. Kama blushed upon Shiro, giving her the head pat. Hey, all right. She then quickly left. All right. Now's my chance, unless if this happens a third time in which it shouldn't, Kiera thought as she planned to make her move. However, as if fate was tempted to save Shiro, BB and her sisters arrived. Ah, come on. Not this again. Hi there, senpai. BB said. Hi, Shiro, Passion Lip said. Hey, Shiro, Melt Lilith said. Hi, Shiro. King Proteus said. Hmm? Shiro said as he turned around to see BB, Passion Lip, Melt Lilith, and King Protea together. BB, Passion Lip, Melt Lilith, King Protea? What are all of you doing here? BB smirked. To thank you for earlier. Yeah. Thank you for fixing the TV earlier, Passion Lip said. Yeah. Now we can watch our shows easily, Melt Lilith said. Yeah. Thank you, Shiro. King Proteus said. No problem, Shiro replied. Anyways, bye Shiro. Come on everyone. BB said as she quickly left. Soon BB's sisters said their goodbyes and left Shiro alone. Kiera let out a sigh as the distractions were gone. Great. Now to enact my plan, and dash. All right. Should be fixed. Now to give this to Da Vinci, Shiro said as he picked up the fixed item and soon left, leaving Kiera in dismay over what just happened. Shiro was walking in the hallway, minding his own business. As he was walking, he came across a certain object that was on the ground. HM? What is this? Shiro thought as he picked up the object. The object itself was a pendant. The jewel that was in the middle was a diamond with gold engravings on the side and it was held by a gold chain. A pendant? What's a pendant doing here on the ground? Did one of the servants here drop here or something? Or maybe this is one of Da Vinci's experimental mystic codes? As Shiro continued examining it, in the corner of the hallway, Kiera was watching gleefully as Shiro picked up the object she wanted him to pick up. Yes. Shiro has picked up the pendant I created. All that's is left is for him to wear it then pendant which should activate upon him wearing it around his neck, and soon, he will come to me. As Shiro continued to look at the pendant, Kiera was watching carefully as she hoped for the moment Shiro started to wear it. Come on, come on. Kiera thought. However, her hopes were crushed as Ilya, Kuro, Saitonai, and Miyu suddenly came in. Onii-chan, they explained in unison as they all gave him a hug. What? Ilya? Kuro? Saitone? Miyu? Hey Onii-chan. Miss us? Ilya said. Shiro let out a small sigh. Ilya, Kuro, Saitonai, Miyu, what are all of you doing here? What? Isn't it obvious that a little sister wants to see her big brother right now? Anwes, what are you holding in your hand? Kuro said. HM? Oh this? Some pendant that was on the ground earlier, Shiro replied as he showed it to Ilya, Kuro, Saitonai, and Miyu. As they took a closer look at it, Saitonai and Miyu noticed something. Hey Miyu, are you feeling that? 
Saitone whispered to Miyu. Yeah. That pendant, it seems dangerous. Miyu whispered back. Ilya, Kuro, what do you think of it? That pendant? It smells like danger, Ilya replied. Yeah. Even by looking at it, it irks me for some reason, Kuro said. I agree, Saitone said. Me too, Miyu said. As Ilya, Kuro, Saitonai, and Miyu were chatting among with each other, Shiro was confused with what was going on between them. Um, everyone. Shiro asked. Oniai-chan, do you mind if you get the pendant to us for a while? Ilya asked. Well, okay, but dash. Do it, Kuro, Saitonai, and Miyu said in unison and meaningly. Not wanting to anger his little sisters, Shiro quickly gave them the pendant. Here. Ilya instantly grabbed the pendant. Good. You can move on now, she said. But dash. Now, Kuro, Saitonai, and Miyu said I in an instant, Shiro quickly left the hallway he was in, leaving Ilya, Kuro, Saitonai, and Miyu alone with the pendant. Okay, now that Onii Chans is gone, shall we do it? Ilya asked. Yes, Kuro, Saitonai, and Miyu said in unison. And they then destroyed the pendant, with Kiera watching from the sidelines in despair. Okay. This plan shouldn't fail this time. All I need to do is to wait until the right timing, and then he'll be mine to play with. Kiera thought as she was reviewing the plan she had in her mind. What her plan for today to get Shiro was to set up a small trap in the hallway in which one of the doors he would usually pass by was rigged with a mechanism to suck him into the room. Which was her room coincidentally. As she was done with rigging the room, she heard some footsteps coming in from the hallway. Kiera quickly went behind a corner of the hallway, waiting for her plan to happen. IT was then Shiro came into the hallway. Yes. All I need to do is to wait until he comes by room, which should activate the trap on my door. Now come Amiya Shiro. Shiro kept walking. Come on. She heard his footsteps getting closer. Come on. Then she heard a door opening, followed up by Shiro yelling, Wah. And the door closed. Yes. My plan finally worked. Let's see the results now. Kiera thought happily as she checked on her room to see the results. However, as she went to the front door of her room, the rig door opened on its own and out of nowhere, a pair of mechanical hands grabbed Kiera and dragged her into the room. What the? Kiera was soon dragged into her room, the door shutting itself behind her. Great. I'm being trapped by my own trap, just how did he escape? And whose door was opened earlier? Meanwhile, that's it Shiro, just pull it a little bit tighter, Astria said. Like this? Shiro asked as he did what Astria told him to do. Yeah. Shiro let out a small sigh as he was helping Astria getting dressed. As he was helping her getting dressed, Shiro can't help but think that something bad was going to happen if Astria didn't drag him into her room earlier. Come on my Preter. There is a lot more I want to show you. Nero exclaimed excitedly. As so do I. Castor Nero said. Me too. Bride Nero said. Shiro let out a small, Sai was being dragged by Nero, Castor Nero, and Bride Nero, inside of Chaldea's mini mall. What happened was that earlier, Shiro got himself roped into one of Nero's shopping sprees by an invitation from her. And that included her counterparts too. Right now, Nero and her counterparts were dragging Shiro to each of their favorite stores and restaurants. Earlier, they had a meal along with some sweets and right now, they were shopping for clothes and accessories. However, what they didn't realize was that Kiera was stalking them in the distance and was waiting for a chance to strike. Geez. Just how long can these girls go? It's already been hours since they've been together, and they haven't even taken a break. 
And even if they did take a break, he's always with the girls together. Man, this is taking longer than I thought. As she continued to follow Shiro, Nero, Castor Nero, and Bride Nero, the four of them then stopped at a nearby bench. Kiera then hid behind a corner of a store, being unseen by them. What? Today seemed like a great day, don't you think my counterparts? Nero asked proudly. Yes. A whole day of eating food, drinks, and shopping is a good day for all of us. Castor Nero replied proudly. Yes. And with our Preter as well. Bride Nero said. Well, I'm glad that all of you liked it, Shiro said with a smile while taking a few deep breaths. Nero and her counterparts let out a smile. Yeah, they said in unison. Speaking of which, do you mind if I use the bathroom? Nero asked. So do I, Castor Nero said. Me too, Bride Nero said. Sure. I don't mind, Shiro replied. Great. Thank you, my creator. Nero and her counterparts said happily. They then left for the nearby bathroom, leaving Shiro alone in on the bench. Yes. Now's my chance. Kiera thought as she was now ready to enact her plan. Only for someone else she did not accept to come by. HM? Kid? See you said as he noticed Shiro. Eh? See you? What are you doing here? Shiro asked as he noticed see you. I'm here doing some errands. I see. Shiro and Lancer see you then began to have a long conversation. As their conversation went on, Kiera looked at them in annoyance. Come on. Hurry up already. Eventually, Shiro and Siyu were done with their conversation and Siyu left. Okay. Now to enact my plan and dash. Hello my Preter. Nero and her counterparts said as they returned from the bathroom. Let us move on. All right, Shiro said as he got out of the bench. And Shiro, Nero, and her counterparts left the bench area. Damn it. Kiera thought as she continued to follow Shiro, Nero, and her counterparts. Okay. And all you need to do is to carry the four and add the two, Shiro said as he was explaining a math problem to Jean Dark and her counterparts in a room that was being used for tutoring lessons. Yes. Jean Dark and Jean Dark Alter, Santa Lily said in unison. Yeah. Jean Dark Alter said. Shiro let out a small sigh as he gathered some breath before continuing the lesson he was giving to Jean Dark and her counterparts. As he continued giving out the lesson, Jean Dark Alter let out a sigh with a moan at the same time. Is there something wrong? Jean Dark asked her altered counterpart. TCH. Why do I have to join this tutoring session? I'm not even bad at math you know, Jean Dark Alter said with a moan. Now, now, you know what they say, knowledge is power, isn't it? Jean Dark said with a smile. Yeah. Follow my proper older self for once. It's better to learn new things you know. Jean Dark Alter, Santa Lily said. Fine. As Shiro continued to give the tutoring lesson to Jean Dark and her counterparts, Kiera was waiting outside of the room, waiting. Okay, new plan. Wait until the tutoring session is over as Jean Dark and her counterparts leave, and then ambush him, she thought as she continued watching the scene of Shiro tutoring. As time passed, Shiro continued tutoring Jean Dark and her counterparts. Okay, and that's how you solve the problem. Are there any questions? Nope. Jean Dark and Jean Dark Alter, Santa Lily, said with a smile on their faces. Nope. Jean Dark Alter said. Great. Shiro then looked at the clock in the room. Oh, it seems like there's no time left, so we'll end today's session now. Jean Dark and her counterparts got off from their seats. Finally. Jean Dark Alter moaned as the session was over. 
time to get out of here. Thanks for the tutoring session Shiro. Jean Dark said. Yeah. It was quite interesting. Jean Dark Alter, Santa Lily said. I see. Glad that both of you liked it, Shiro said. Although I'm a bit worried about your other counterpart there. Nah. She's just grumpy now. Anyways, see you. Bye. Jean Dark, said. Bye Shiro-san. Jean Dark Alter, Santa Lily said. Bye. Jean Dark and her counterparts then left, with Shiro following them. Yes. Now's my chance. Kiera thought as she prepared to ambush him. However, before she could do so, she felt a hand touching him. Hey. Kiera turned around to see who the voice was. It was Hans Christian Andersen. And he doesn't look happy. Just what are you up to you perverted nun, he asked. Kiera let out a sigh. She was not going to escape from this. Shiro was in the training room, practicing his swordsmanship as he kept swinging his katana at the training dummies, slashing them down easily, turning them into pieces. Phew. Seems it looks like I did quite the workout today, Shiro thought as he examined the results of his earlier actions. Well, time to get back then. Shiro then continued to practice his swordsmanship on the training dummies. Meanwhile, Kiera was looking afar from the training room in a corner of the nearby hallway. Okay. Once he's tired out, I'll snatch him away and escape to my room. All I need to do is to wait. Kiera thought. As Shiro continued practicing, it was then that three certain servants came into the training room. Okita, Okita Alter, and Musashi. Shiro-san. Okita and Okita Alter said in unison. Shiro Kuen. Musashi said. HM? Okita? Okita Alter? Musashi? What are all of you doing here? Isn't it obvious? We're here to train, Okita said. Yeah. I want to practice my swordsmanship, Okita Alter said. Me too. Musashi explained excitedly. Is that so? Then try practicing on those training dummies over there, Shiro said as he pointed at a pile of training dummies. However, Okita Alter and Musashi had other ideas. Nah. I don't think that those training dummies will Shiro-san, Okita Alter said. Is that so? Then what do you suggest? Musashi then pointed at Shiro. You, she said. Shiro was surprised. And me? Yes, Okita Alter and Musashi said. W wait for a moment. Okita interrupted, why? Isn't it obvious? He's the strongest swordsman in all of Chaldea, Okita Alter said. Yeah. If anything, he's the perfect opponent to practice on. Musashi said. But, still, let me ask him, for a moment. Okita then turned to Shiro. Shiro-san, do you mind being our sparring partner for today? There was silence between them as they were waiting for Shiro's answer. Sure. I don't mind, Shiro replied. The three of them let out a smile. Yes, they exclaimed. Soon, Shiro then started to have practice matches against Okita, Okita Alter, and Musashi. As they were having their practice matches, Kiera watched with patience as they were fighting against each other. Geez, just how long is this going to take? It's just a practice match. It shouldn't take that long. Eventually, Shiro was done with the practice matches. As they were done, Okita, Okita Alter, and Musashi then came out of the training with a smile on their faces. Wah! Wasn't today's training interesting? Musashi asked. Yes. Thanks to Shiro-san, Okita Alter replied. Yeah. It feels like my swordsmanship has improved a bit, Okita said. Soon the three girls disappeared into the distance, allowing Kiera to enact her plan. Yes. 
Now's my chance to dash. However, it was then that a bunch of swordsmen just came into the room. Ah, come on. Seriously? Kama let out a sigh. Damn it. Just how is it that every of my plans to get him have failed? It's like if there's something or someone out there to protect him from me. Just what is he? Having trouble over there, a voice said nearby. She then turned around to see where the voice came from. It was EMIYA Alter. Oh my. It's you. Yeah. The same man you corrupted a long time ago. For a moment, Kiara and EMIYA didn't say anything. Then Kiara decided to start the conversation. Just what is it that you want? Just one thing. Stay away from my younger self, EMIYA Alter. Oh really? And why? Because he doesn't deserve the torture that you gave to me in the past. Torture? Don't you mean pleasure? Like the one I gave to you in the past? Kiara asked in a sultry tone. In an instant, EMIYA Alter pulled out his guns, ready to shoot her right in the face. Oh my. Listen here. I don't want to repeat myself, but I'll say this one more time. Leave my younger self alone, EMIYA Alter said with anger in his voice, especially on the last part. Oh. And what if I don't want to? Kiara asked. EMIYA Alter smirked. You'll have to deal with the rest of us. Kiara was surprised at EMIYA Alter's statement. The rest of us? Yeah. And they're behind you. Kiara turned around to see what EMIYA Alter was talking about. As she turned around, there was Arturia and her counterparts, Ishtar and her counterparts, Parvati, Kama, BB and her sisters, Ilya and her counterparts, Miu, Astria, Irisville, Jaguarman, EMIYA, Karitsugu, Nero and her counterparts, Jean Dark and her counterparts, Okita and her counterpart, Musashi, the Knights of the Round, and Merlin looking at her with angry eyes. And they all had their weapons out. Oh. Yeah. So, I would suggest giving up now, EMIYA Alter said. Or would you rather die here now? Knowing that she was clearly outnumbered by the number of servants here, she made a decision. All right. I'll give up. EMIYA Alter smiled. Good. And that's how Shiro unknowingly managed to stay away from meeting the same fate as EMIYA Alter.